and welcome to Treasury Notes, a financial education program from the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. I'm your host, Gina Joins. West Virginians with disabilities can now save money without the risk of losing benefits thanks to a new program. It's called WV ABLE. West Virginia ABLE is offered through the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office and is made possible by the Achieving a Better Life Experience in West Virginia Act, also known as West Virginia ABLE Act. Today's show focuses on some of the details of this new program and who it will help and how people can sign up to participate. We're very excited about this show. Joining me now to discuss the ins and outs of the program are WV ABLE Director Christy Pritt and also Christina Smith, Executive Director of the ARC of West Virginia. Ladies, thank you both so much for being here today. Thank you for having thank us. You. Well, I'm excited to get into this because this has been um, something that's been some time in the making for the treasurer's office, and I know it's something that's near and dear to both of your hearts. Christy, I'm going to start with you in just talking about this new investment program of the treasurer's office. It was launched about a month ago, and there was a, a wonderful event to um, do the launch. Give us an overview of what WV ABLE actually is. WB ABLE is a program that allows individuals with disabilities to set up investment and savings accounts so they will not lose benefits such as Social Security and Medicaid. Before ABLE, they were, not, uh, they were only allowed to save up to $2,000 before they lost benefits. And these are also tax-free accounts. Yeah, so it's really a game changer mm -hmm. for many people. And Christina, WV ABLE is important to you, not just professionally, but also personally. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about uh, your organization, the ARC of West Virginia, what it does, how this new plan will impact you, um, your family, and, and many of the families that you service throughout the state. So um, I'm very fortunate to be able to work for an agency called the ARC, and the ARC's been around since the 1950s. Actually, it was a it was a group of parents that got together many many years ago that wanted to come up with alternatives to having to put their children in institutions. And so fast forward 60 some years, and the ARC of West Virginia and the Mid Ohio Valley and other chapters here in the state are part of the largest community based organization that serves individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families in the entire country. We're a grassroots organization and so we are thrilled from I'm thrilled from a professional level to be able to um, have a program that's come on board um, in our state we've worked on it on a national level and on a state level but being able to be part of rolling out that program here um, we're very excited because we know what impact it will have in a positive manner for those individuals living with disabilities in the state of West Virginia oh that's great and you know you talk about parents such a driving force absolutely it's such a powerful force and really um, helped launch this initiative on the national level and the arc has been part of that absolutely we were very active on the uh, from the arc on a national level um, to get to actually get the ball rolling um, federally because the federal legislation had to be passed before it was brought to West Virginia so we were very fortunate to be one of the very first states to come on board um, with the state legislation that allowed that to happen and and we were excited to be able to be part of that because uh, unfortunately historically there have been many mm -hmm. barriers to being um, able to save and um, allow individuals with developmental disabilities to have independence and to um, be self-determined in their lives. Christy let's talk about the fact that this program has been in the work for years WV ABLE. Um, can you walk us through the steps of really what it took to get to where we are today with the WV ABLE plan. Mm -hmm. I know uh, as Christina and I were talking about, there was federal mm -hmm. legislation passed and then there was state legislation mm -hmm. that needed to be passed. Yes. Uh, yes, the federal legislation was passed in 2014. Uh, the Stephen Beck Jr. Achieving a Better Life Experience known as the ABLE Act. Then in 2015, the state legislation was passed, which gave Treasurer Purdue the authority to create the state's plan. And then last month, we launched WV ABLE, and um, now we are, uh, can go online and set up accounts that, um, online. There is five investment options, four Vanguard accounts, and then there's also one FDIC account, which is uh, principles is secured. Yeah, and I'm just going to tell people they can go to wvtreasury.com mm -hmm. to get more information. They can also go to wvable.com and that's mm -hmm. really the place they're going to go to get the best information, be able to sign up right then and there for mm -hmm. an account 
or see if they're eligible. Mm -hmm. That's also a great place to check out and see if you're eligible. And I know um, we were able to offer this, the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office was able to offer this program through a partnership mm -hmm. with Ohio and Ohio's stable account. Can you talk a little bit about this partnership and why that's an important mm -hmm. piece of this? Yes, after the state legislation was passed, Treasurer Purdue evaluated all the possible options, and after doing a lot of research, he, he determined that partnering with Ohio was the most cost-efficient way to administer this program. They have the largest program. They have an in infrastructure in place that we were able to utilize. Um, it was a huge cost savings to the state of West Virginia. It was a good decision to join with, with, with Ohio, and we are currently one of 10 uh, partner states with Ohio. And, and that partnership is growing, mm -hmm. so that's really something mm -hmm. special, I think. Christina, we um, uh, have been talking about ABLE and, and just again kind of want to reiterate why there's such a need for this in the state of West Virginia and really around around the nation. Um, but there is a need, a specific need for anyone who has some type of disability to be able to save um, without jeopardizing some of their other assistance. Right, absolutely, because one of the, one of the barriers um, and one of the issues that many individuals have to juggle um, if they do have disabilities um, is that they truly do want to save. They want to be able to better their life. They want to be able to be self-determined mm -hmm. and make choices. And unfortunately, the way the systems have been set up historically, um, there are barriers that have been created because they cannot save without losing other benefits. Um, they should, it's holding people back from being able to reach their potential because they have to enter sometimes um, in what we call a spend down mode where they are having to purchase items just to be spending down the money so they don't reach the threshold that would that would make them um, lose benefits on a monthly on a monthly basis and we know folks who truly want to save their money for meaningful um, purchases that could better mm -hmm. their lives and improve their lives and improve their quality of life and they've not been able to do that in the past it allows uh, parents to help them save as well well. Absolutely, and I didn't yeah. touch on that. That's a very, very mm -hmm. important piece because many parents and grandparents and family members want to ensure that their loved ones are taken care of physically and emotionally and mentally long after they're gone. And that has not been in place. That's not been an option in the past mm -hmm. because if, the, if money was left to them or assets were left to them, they ran the risk of potentially um, harming the the future of their loved one without knowing that and this will be a, a mechanism that will allow them to do that and they will have peace of mind that they will be able to mm -hmm. do that without harming um, the, the financial future of their loved one for the rest of their lives. Yeah, that's a great point. All right, ladies. Well, as we just talked about, WV Able has been in the works for a while. So when the program officially launched in February, it was a celebration for many people. Kim Ward now has more on that piece. In February, the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office launched a new savings program to help individuals with disabilities. I believe in planning for the financial future. And this gives our citizens, parents, grandparents, and others the opportunity to plan for the future of their loved ones who need this program. WV Able is made possible by the Achieving a Better Life Experience in West Virginia Act, also known as the West Virginia Able Act. WV Able empowers individuals with disabilities and their families to save and invest without losing eligibility for public benefits programs such as Medicaid and Supplemental Security Income, also known as SSI. They don't have to have that fear of, well, I can only make $50 a week because I'll lose my Medicaid, I'll lose my, my housing. And so having these accounts allows individuals with disabilities, their family members, to be able to set that money aside that is not counted against them for um, programs that they're eligible for. Prior to the passage of the ABLE Act, individuals receiving government benefits were restricted in the amount of money they could save or invest. Before, financial assets in excess of just $2,000 could result in the loss of benefits. Individuals with disabilities want to work. They want to be productive. They want to be able to pay taxes. But right now, as it exists, there are disincentives to that because they can only make so much money. They can't save money. Therefore, they have to enter into spend-down um, situations where they have to spend on things they really don't need just to keep that account low. Or they have to turn down hours and aren't able to work as many hours or at the wage um, that other individuals are receiving for that same task because they would make too much money and lose their benefits anyway. 
Now, with WV Able, these individuals can save up to $15,000 a year to use for qualified expenses such as health care, housing, transportation, education, and training. Those extra and significant costs that are associated many times by having a disability um, will be taken care of through accounts such as West Virginia Able. Other benefits of the program include tax-free earnings and an option to get a stable card, which is a load and spin card that can be used anywhere debit or credit cards are accepted. Of course, if you ask a parent of a child with a disability, they would say the greatest benefit of WV Able is peace of mind. And knowing that you can put money aside, they can take care of your loved ones that have a disability in West Virginia and know that they can be taken care of and they're not going to lose their benefits. That is priceless. Many family members want to ensure that their child, whether their adult child or their young child, will be able to be provided for financially and emotionally and physically once those family members are long gone. To be eligible for a WV ABLE account, you must have developed a disability before the age of 26. To find out if you or a loved one may qualify, take the WV ABLE eligibility quiz. You can find the quiz and sign up for an account at wvable.com. Reporting for Treasury Notes, I'm Kim Ward. All right, thanks so much, Kim. And Kim talked a lot about the eligibility quiz that you mm -hmm. can take. Again, you just go online to wvable.com. You're able to take the eligibility quiz to find out if WV Able is something that you or a family member might be able to take advantage of. And, and Christy, um, you're here talking about West Virginia Able, this new program mm -hmm. in the state treasurer's office that is now being offered as a saving and investment option for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Can you go into a little bit more detail about who is eligible and mm -hmm. some of the criteria? Yes. I know there's there's, there's a, a wide range, mm -hmm. um, but there there yes. are some standard things that you can mention. Yes. An eligible individual must have the onset of the disability before the age of 26, and then they must meet one of the following three criteria. They must have, be eligible for SSI or SSDI, or they have a condition approved by the Social Security Administration, which that list is on our website, or they can self-certify, which means that they have a uh, physician statement stating that they have a disability. And also, they have to be a West Virginia resident. Right. And, and you know, we had talked about the uh, 26 or, or younger mm -hmm. at onset, but there's been some talk on the federal level mm -hmm. that maybe that might change someday down mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely an option out there. And, that, and that's something that we would definitely mm -hmm. um, want to S um, actually advocate mm -hmm. for because yeah. we truly believe that many individuals, you know, that, that 26th birthday, if they would have an accident or an incident that would mm -hmm. cause them to have a disability, you know, the day before their 26th birthday, yeah. the, the impacts of that disability would not be any less two days later. Sure. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. so we would really advocate for that. And the uh, push is going to the age of 46. That's what they, the national, that's, that's the national push. push. Yeah. Chrissy, there are limits, though, now also on how much money individuals mm -hmm. can put in ABLE. Can you throw out those numbers mm -hmm. and tell us what some of those yes. limits are, which are pretty generous? Yes. yes. Um, the annual contribution is 15000 but if you're employed, you can uh, contribute an additional $12,060 of your income, which totals 27060 if you're employed. Uh, Lifetime contribution limits is 462000 Yeah, that's a, and that's, mm -hmm. those are some very reasonable limits, I think. Christina, mm -hmm. what are some of the expenses? And I know you're going to get this question a lot through your mm -hmm. agency. People saying, okay, I'm going to establish a WV ABLE account, but now what can I use this money for? Mm -hmm. Are there limits on how I can use this money? And, and there's also that option mm -hmm. um, that we really haven't uh, talked about yet with the fact that this is really a hybrid account. It's not just a savings and investment account, but it's also going to have a card associated with it if they choose mm -hmm. to where they can use it, mm -hmm. um, preload that debit card and use it, well, mm -hmm. preload the card and use it similar to a debit mm -hmm. card. So talk about the fact that there are a lot of different options for them to use this money. Right. One of the things that we are extremely excited about, um, not only professionally, but I know we haven't talked a great deal about me being the mother of a daughter yeah. who has developmental disabilities. And, you know, we were so excited to be able to get Anna mm -hmm. signed up for the West Virginia ABLE program because I believe as a parent, her, her mm -hmm. father and I, um, 
and I believe that this program is going to allow her to be more independent because of some of those options that are mm -hmm. available with the debit card. Um, it will give her independence to spend her money, but we'll still have some some safety features that would mm -hmm. allow us to oversee and help manage those for her. Mm -hmm. um, there are the 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 things that can be spent, the qualified expenses, we think are just amazing. And this is going to really tip the scale in, in favor of those with disabilities who want to help manage, kind of manage their life and improve their quality because they can be used for um, housing expenses, for rent expenses, things that special needs trusts wouldn't necessarily allow a family um, to leave mm -hmm. money to, to spend on food, um, rent, um, housing improvements. You know, we had a, an example of someone who ha owns his mm -hmm. own home, but he wasn't able to save for the um, the emergency factors mm -hmm. of broken water lines and things like that. So right. there, anything that has to do with housing, there's transportation. You know, if it's purchasing a vehicle to be used for transportation of someone that relates mm -hmm. to their disability, that would be potentially qual a qualified expense. Um, employment training and support, assistive technology, um, anything from wheelchairs to augmentative communication devices to anything mm -hmm. that would help um, a, an individual with disabilities mm -hmm. become more independent and remain more independent. Mm, right. um, educational activities. Um, so there are, there's a plethora of, of, of categories that individuals mm -hmm. can tap into. And as long as it's qualified and it is to be used or is needed because of that individual's disability, then it can become a qualified mm -hmm. expense. And, and uh, you know, just kind of on this line of, of talk, this is really more than a savings account. It, it's, it's, kind of a little bit like a banking account, a little bit like a, a 529 mm -hmm. college savings account. Exactly. It's, it's a little bit of everything rolled into one. Um, this is really exciting for people who are investing in the program though, because it does offer them some flexibility. You just mentioned mm -hmm. a lot of different ways they can use the money that they put mm -hmm. into a WV ABLE account. And the investment plan uh, does have earnings that are tax-free. The earnings mm -hmm. are tax-free, so that's also a great option. Anything else that really makes it attractive to an individual? One of the, the uh, benefits that I see, and I touched on it, but going back to the debit card feature mm -hmm. of that yeah. um, and the protection piece, it will allow individuals to be able to, um, um, there's a safety feature, you know, yeah. mechanisms that are built into it, but it will allow us to be able to provide them with a tool that they can go use and be independent and spend money and have some say in what it's spent, but there are safety features that are built into it that would allow them to go in and learn how to do reporting and budgeting and print off those reports because they do have to, yeah. you know, submit reports to um, different agencies on that. So those are some pieces that are very, um, very good to, we and believe are very good you mentioned as a parent i mean right. and you have a beautiful daughter who um you uh, signed up for this Absolutely. program right. um you mentioned as a parent especially that's a great feature to have because you're teaching your child uh, mm -hmm. the basic necessities of life that it, you know every parent needs to teach and sometimes those things are mm -hmm. um, for any child out there. We do a lot of financial literacy mm -hmm. around the state at the treasurer's office and we're always finding that those are the skills that individuals in our community need to make sure they have and mm -hmm. be able to use bank cards, be able to um, do some budgeting. So it's that feature alone Absolutely. is a great asset for any parent. Um, we also, you, you also touched on the pooled trust, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that because the ABLE account is different mm -hmm. than a trust, and we've heard that used before, but can, are there any other differences? Can you kind of explain some of the differences between the two accounts? So um, special needs trusts are very, very important, yeah. uh, very important from a parent perspective, from a, um, from a, a long-term planning perspective. But the ease of getting the money um, to, you know, to be useful, many individuals mm -hmm actually, and I can give you an example of ourselves, um, we have a special needs trust that was developed for Anna many years ago, but it's not funded yet. I mean, it would be funded potentially with life insurance policies or things that happen later on in life. But the the um, those funds that are within special needs trusts are so regulated and so sp very specific. You cannot use those for housing, for rent. You cannot use those for food. Um, those um, expenses have to be outlined so in very, very great 
great detail and they're very limited in what they can be used for. And there are um, situations where that money would have to be sent back to the state and pay back to the state. And many, um, many issues with special needs trust, there is definitely a need for them. There is a place for them. They're very important, but this will augment the ability for individuals to be able to save and use um, the ease of use and the ease of withdrawal and the way that you can get the money out to use it for everyday expenses and for qualified expenses for those ordinary and extraordinary expenses sure. that an individual may face that may not be covered by a special needs trust. All right, Chrissy, let's just talk about signing up for an account. Um, we're, we're explaining the details of WV Able, and it's a fantastic opportunity mm -hmm. for many individuals here in West Virginia. But it's, uh, first of all, I want to make mention, you can only have one account. You can only have one account. And it's pretty simple to sign up. Tell enrollment, us how. Yes, <laughs> enrollment is online. It's uh, wvable.com, and it takes about 15 minutes. And is there a minimum contribution for them to open up an yes, account? Yes, the initial contribution is $50. And any fees for opening an account? The online enrollment is free. Okay. Um, uh, is there pr proof that they need to, uh, a lot of documentation required? Because I know, as you said, this is an online oh, yeah. process. So um, is it hard for people no. to, to give a lot of proof? And things like the that? online uh, enrollment is very easy. It's either going to be the individual or the authorized legal representative, which is going to be the parent, guardian, or the power of attorney. Um, there's a series of questions they'll have to answer. Um, name, address, include social security, and a little bit of information about the disability. Um, at the end of the application, they'll certify all the information is correct and submit. There is no additional information that has to be uploaded uh, or verification that, that needs to be sent. Yeah, and, and we talked about the card quite a bit, mm -hmm. but easy in and easy mm -hmm. out. So that's yes, that's right. really mm -hmm. the great part yes. about WV Able right. that makes it so unique, I think. It's it's similar to a bank account in yes. that aspect. Exactly. So very, very beneficial. Um, what a great option for uh, family and friends to help out as well. And um, we're going to take a quick break right now, though. We're going to have much more about WV ABLE, the investment and savings plan. Mm -hmm. We're going to have that coming up after this short break. Stay with us. Babies are expensive. Formula, diapers, daycare. That's just the first year. Oh, wish you could start saving for college now. The Piggy Bank Ferry is granting wishes of college savings to new parents by contributing $100 when you open a Smart 529 account. Enroll in West Virginia's Smart 529 Bright Babies program before your grandchild's first birthday or gotcha day. And Smart 529 will contribute $100 into your Smart 529 college savings account. Wishes do come true. Register in the first year so when they sit up, it's time to sign up. To learn about Smart 529, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, read the official statement available from Smart529.com. Check with your home state to learn if it offers tax or other benefits for investing in its own 529 plan. Welcome back to Treasury Notes. I'm your host, Gina Joins. Today we're talking about WV ABLE, a new program available through West Virginia State Treasurer John Purdue's office, which empowers people with disabilities and their families to save and invest for long-term needs. Christy Pritt, the director of WV ABLE at the Treasurer's office is here with me, as well as Christina Smith, executive director of the ARC of West Virginia Ladies. Again, mm -hmm. appreciate you both mm -hmm. being here with me today. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about WV ABLE. Christy, we were talking a lot about WV mm -hmm. ABLE before the break, but uh, talking about the individuals. But I also wanted to touch on the fact that this is an opportunity for family members mm -hmm. who want to contribute to these types of accounts mm -hmm. to help help people out mm -hmm. and gift maybe some money to them. Talk about how the gifting program works and, and how that's going to be a great feature yeah. of this program. Yeah, this is a great feature. Um, it's great for birthdays or special occasions. Um, the individual would log into his account um, and select the e-gift event and it does an email blast to all family, friends, or whoever they select and it gives a special link that the, the family and friends can, can click on and contribute directly into the account. It also keeps track of who contributed so that person can, can acknowledge the gift. 
Yeah, it, it, another great feature, mm -hmm. and I'm sure, Christina, it's something that um, uh, people like yourself and, and other people who have WV Able accounts will continue to mm -hmm. use. Yes, mm -hmm. we were very excited about that feature. Yeah. Birthdays and, and upcoming celebrations. So. Well, mm -hmm. and it's similar to a Smart 529 Absolutely. account where we always um, tell mm -hmm. people at the treasurer's office, you know, give the gift of college savings. Now mm -hmm. you can give mm -hmm. another type of gift as mm -hmm. well. Just a really great feature. Um, we talked a lot about uh, the how to open up an account and, and what WV Able is going to do for people. But Christina, for you, as we touched on earlier, uh, this is something that's meaningful to you and your family. Mm -hmm. Talk about how it's going to affect you and your family and just um, give me that personal mm -hmm. personal perspective mm -hmm. on it. So uh, my daughter is almost, she'll be 16 years old in a couple of weeks. And, and It <laughs> is, it is. Um, and um, from a parent perspective, it's one of the programs that we can truly get behind because we believe that West Virginia ABLE you know, is absolutely critical in the for health, independence, mm -hmm. and quality of life. We do believe that. I believe that personally. And so I am excited to have Anna be able to grow up, you know, into her adult life, having this program that she can use as a benefit mm -hmm. and as a tool to help her improve her quality of life. Because here's the bottom line, you know, health, independence, quality of life, um, that should not you shouldn't have to choose between those things mm -hmm. and losing your benefits. They're both so vitally important. And so having this program is, mm -hmm. is, is going to be something that's life changing for many individuals um, that I serve and support mm -hmm. through the Ark of West Virginia. And my daughter is one of those individuals who participates in those programs. So from a parent perspective, we are absolutely thrilled mm -hmm. that we've been able to be part of the rolling out of that because we truly believe it will be life changing. Yeah, you said it so well. Every individual mm -hmm. should have an opportunity Absolutely. to save for their needs and their wants Absolutely. and that's really what WV Able mm -hmm. is all about. Christy, I know you've got a lot mm -hmm. on the plate this month um, with uh, WV Able rolling out mm -hmm. recently. A lot of people contacting the office wanting to have more information and you're going to be doing some outreach. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about those efforts? Yes, I've been reaching out to state agencies, advocacy groups, uh, consumers, families, and uh, working with them and trying to spread the word. Your organization has been wonderful to help spread the word. Um, if anybody would like a presentation or help enrolling, all they have to do is call this treasurer's office and ask for me, and I'll be glad to assist. And they can just call 304 558 5000, mm -hmm. ask for Christy Pritt. That's mm -hmm. the easiest way to get a speaker out to your organization. Yes. Or again, go to wvtreasury.com or wvable.com and find out more information. Any final thoughts, ladies? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate you spreading the word about this new program mm -hmm. and helping educate the public mm -hmm. on everything that the Treasurer's Office is mm -hmm. doing. Thank you so much. Again, to learn more about WVABLE.com, you can just go to WVABLE.com, as I said earlier. You can also find out a lot of mm -hmm. information we talked about today in a list of frequently asked questions on the WVABLE website. That's all the time we have right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, you can always get the latest news and information from the State Treasurer's Office. Follow us on Facebook or on Twitter, and of course, on our website. Keeping you informed on the Library Television Network, I'm Gina Joins with the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office.